Hi everyone, back with another one. Um, before I get started, I want to address something that has been uh, on Facebook lately. I have not heard any of you all tell me that you are gonna, wanting to try this, but uh, do not use denatured alcohol. I know with the alcohol shortage, with the isopropyl alcohol shortage, you know, people are getting much more into um, experimenting with some other things that they might be able to paint with. Do not use denatured alcohol. It is not the same thing as isopropyl alcohol. Now, isopropyl is toxic, uh, but if you, please don't, do not drink isopropyl purple alcohol. But if you drink it, you're probably going to get really sick, but you're probably not going to die. It's possible, so don't drink it. Um, denatured alcohol, people don't understand what it is. All right, it is ethanol, which is basically moonshine, you know, liquor. But the denatured alcohol is ethanol with other chemicals added to it, which is why it's, that's how they denature it, which there's another way to do it, but with denatured alcohol, that's what it means. It means it has poisonous agents added to it. Methanol being the most common one that gets added to it. Methanol is extremely toxic. Uh, you don't want to breathe methanol fumes. You absolutely don't want to drink it for Pete's sake. But you don't want to get it on your skin because you can absorb that into your skin. I mean, it's... If so, methanol poisoning is can be lethal. You absolutely can die from methanol poisoning. This, But it also, I mean, it can be absorbed through your skin. You, I mean, you just don't want to mess with it. It's uh, denatured alcohol is... It gets used in um, a lot of different projects, uh, different things it can be used for, but it's not something that you want to inhale the fumes from. It's just dangerous. That's the best way I can think of to tell you. You know, isopropyl alcohol is toxic, but with limited contact with your skin and limited contact with the fumes, you know, you're, you're fairly okay with it. Don't, I mean, I, I'm getting to the point where I would probably recommend using a respirator even if you're using isopropyl alcohol because it can cause headaches. If you're not working in a very well ventilated area, it can cause headaches. It can cause some breathing issues, um, a little bit of respiratory problems with your lungs and things if you're, you continually breathe these isopropyl fumes. Okay, well, think of the denatured alcohol then on that's going to be all that on steroids you know it's going to be much worse so um just please don't i know that there have been some things going around on facebook where people are suggesting using it and that it's fine and it's going to be totally safe won't be any different than using isopropyl I mean, you know, you can make your own choice. You're an adult, but I'm telling you, I think it is a very bad idea. It's, I don't know what, um, what all the dangers are of it when it comes to inhalation of the fumes and exposure to your skin if you're getting it on your hands while you're painting. But I'm sure it's not good. Denatured alcohol is more dangerous when it comes to inhalation and things like that, be, be, just because it has this methanol in it. Uh, methanol, if, if it's ingested into your body, it actually, um, your body metabolizes it into formaldehyde, which is, you know, highly toxic poison. So don't, just don't use it. There are other things out there that you can use. You know, like like the video that I did using the 190 proof grain alcohol, um, which <laughs> it's basically ethanol, but it doesn't have the poisons added to it. Uh, you know, there's um, blending solutions. They don't act exactly the same way. I'm not a huge fan of blending solution. It's sticky and it, it makes my inks move differently, but that's just what I'm used to. 
but you can still paint with it. Um, I actually, I did, I put a link in below, uh, in the description box below to um, some, I, I think I mentioned it in the last video, to some Tim Holtz Ranger brand blending solution that came as a two pack and also had one of the alcohol pens with it to put it in so that you could actually lift color off of the paper. What I'm getting all over here. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to do that quick little PSA because uh, I, I absolutely do not want anyone causing themselves long-term harm from painting like this. It's, you know, using the isopropyl, there's some risk involved, but not nearly the risk that there is if you're using denatured alcohol. So just please don't. All right, so that's my lecture for tonight. I'm done with that, I hope. <laughs> Can't promise you I won't bring it back up later. All right, so uh, tonight it is going to be on 12 by 12 graphics craft opaque white graphics. Let me try again. Graphics opaque white craft plastic, uh, 12 by 12. I will, of course, be using my pinata brass in my little needle nose bottle. There are links to both of these down below too. Pretty much everything that I use, I will put a link um, in the description box to every video of my the products that I use the most. Uh, anything that I use and I love and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be using again, I will put um, a link down below in the description box. So that, you know, the pinata brass is in there. Um, I know some of you in other countries have told me you can't get it. It, it won't ship to the other to other countries. Um, so I'm not sure. I don't know what to recommend to you as a substitute for pinata brass if you're not in the U.S. or Canada or one of the countries where you can get this, because this is the absolute my absolute favorite that I have found out of all of the metallic colors that I have tried across a few different brands. That is my absolute favorite. All right, colors tonight. Tim Holtz Ranger Brands, as usual. Um, I've got Current, uh, Pitch Black, and Pink Sherbet. So, a little bit different color combination for me. So, we'll... Uh, see how that goes. <laughs> All right, so I will get started here, and one more quick mention, please don't use the denatured alcohol. Just had to say that one more time. There's plenty of other options out there uh, that you can find, and things are actually, you know, you're starting, occasionally you're starting to see a few more things back on the shelves, at least around here, um, at least grocery-wise anyway. Um, so, you know, it's, it's entirely possible that you're going to be able to get your isopropyl alcohol again fairly soon. Just kind of keep an eye on Amazon or wherever it is that you generally get yours from. And, uh, you know, and hopefully they will be getting some back in stock soon. That is, uh, what I'm using tonight. I'm using the, uh, the 99% isopropyl, what I will be painting with tonight. And I will uh, be right back with you with the painting. Alrighty. I started out with the black. I had debated. I, I sat for a few minutes before I even started uh, painting on this one. <laughs> debating and trying to decide exactly what I wanted to do. And... Uh, it, uh, this is one of those where I ended up listening to the ink because it did not, uh, didn't go the way that I had originally planned. It just wasn't, you know, as I started, it just wasn't, um, it wasn't going to work. I knew what I had originally set out, the, what the idea I had in my head, I knew it wasn't going to work almost immediately. So, uh, you'll see here in a minute, I'll be stopping and looking at it and pondering and thinking, yeah, I don't think that's going to work. So I changed it up and paid attention to what the ink was planning on doing anyway. 
<laughs> so, so that I could come up with something decent. Um, I did, you know, like I normally do, put down a, a drop of alcohol. And I did just use one drop of this, especially with the pitch black. It's really dark color, so it's very pigmented. Uh, put down one drop of that and just a drop of um, pinata brass on top of the ink. And then, you know, the alcohol to kind of move it around. So you can see there's my long pause while I'm thinking, thinking, wait a minute, this isn't going to work. So I, what I just started out in the wrong place, I think is mostly what I did. But then uh, it also was just one of those cases too of, uh, I don't know, maybe my, uh, my heart was listening to the ink while my head wasn't. And I, started, I did what the ink wanted without even realizing it. So, cause I was pretty happy with the way this one turned out. <laughs> I, I was really happy with this color combination. I wasn't sure how it was going to look together before I started, but, uh, but I ended up pretty happy with it in the end. So, um, yeah, so I just went all the way across. And now if you do this, you can see that kind of dark place in the center there where my where I initially put down the black. It left a blue spot in it. Now on Yupo, that's not going to change. You're, I mean, it's going to stain your Yupo, but this is the craft plastic. So it uh, actually did not stain it. It, or if it did, it was so very faint that you couldn't see it. Uh, the more the alcohol and the ink moved back and forth across that particular spot, the more it, you know, kind of washed the blue around and into the rest of it a little bit. And you'll notice I moved this off of my, um, the piece of photo paper that I keep down here that I tend to, use as a backdrop for painting a lot of times. Um, I moved it off because I was working these edges and when you're working on the edges you know you frequently get a lot of overspill of your inks going off the side and when that happens if I've got it on a, a slick surface like photo paper or something it sticks the, my whatever I'm painting on sticks to the photo paper and I have a really hard time lifting it up to move it or and I can't slide it at all because it gets that wet ink underneath in between the two papers. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that was the reason I sort of scooted my, uh, my photo paper out of the way while I was trying to work these edges a little bit. So I wouldn't, if I, when I did get that kind of overspill, it would sort of soak into the, this puppy pad that I have uh, underneath my uh, sheet of photo paper that I was using. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, I just went um, most of the way across on this with the black. Um, this was, I mean, it really is as silly as it sounds sometimes. I, I really did just kind of let the ink lead me after I realized that what I initially wanted wasn't going to happen. I didn't really have much of a plan. I just decided to start putting down ink and kind of see what happened. I, you know, I, I don't really know what to tell you about that because I, I really didn't have much of a plan other than I wanted to have these, well, once I realized that what I wanted wasn't going to work, I I knew I wanted to have these um, colors sort of fading into each other, but I had no idea where or how. I was just kind of going with what struck me at the moment. Um, and I had forgotten to mention at the beginning, I am using my Revlon styling brush hair dryer with the brush attachment removed. And there is a link for that down in the drop-down description box. Um, if you can, if you're in a country where you can't get it, which uh, from what I've heard from several of you, there's quite a few countries that you cannot get this in, not without paying just exorbitant tariffs on trying to get it into your country. Just look for one that has 
uh, that's only about 500 watts, no more. I would recommend no more than 500 watts. That's what this one is. And it still has a pretty strong airflow uh, on the cool setting. So, you know, you don't want it to just really blow your ink any harder than this one does. Um, but also look for one with a cool setting. Uh, to me, that cool setting is very important. Now, yes, you can paint without it. But the some of these plastics that we paint on, the polypropylene, it will warp really easily in the heat. So now some of it, like the graphics and like the Nara, they will flatten back out as they cool. As long as you don't over warp them anyway. The, um, the heavyweight Yupo is another one that even if it warps some while you're painting, it will flatten back out while you're using it or I mean while it's cooling uh, but I don't like my paper to warp even if it's going to flatten back out because it leaves these little dips and valleys that make your ink not move the way you want it to it, it has you know it's like a liquid it goes downhill so it just doesn't move the same if your paper has got you know little dips and valleys in it so and I had, I don't know if y'all noticed this or not. I I wish I had been paying closer attention when I did it. The, okay, I put down, I went to Current next. That's the color I put down next to the black ink on the end there. When I, I put down my, a drop of Current ink, put down a drop of the, um, actually I, I think I got a couple of drops of the brass because an extra drop accidentally came off. Set the brass down, reached over to pick up my alcohol bottle, and picked up the brass again. And I squirted a big old squirt of brass on there. So that is why that one little spot right there right now looks like a whole different shade than the other. Because it got a big squirt of brass on it. Not just a drop or two, but a big squirt. So that's why that... <laughs> looks like a slightly different shade than some of the rest of it. All right, so um, I came on up through there all the way up with the current and was trying to be really careful to, I wanted to put it down close to the black but not on top of the black so that when I put my alcohol down, I will blow that color over on top of the black and then back off so that some of the black, the edge of the black will soften and blend a little bit with the current or whatever color you happen to be using. Um, you can see now that I've turned it, you can see just how bright and shiny that corner is right now. Um, but that's, that's how you blend these colors together is you want to try to wash your alcohol and your ink right here. Now watch. Now see, I'm pushing it down over the black, but then I push it right back up again. And when I start pushing the current back down, I try not to go into the black again. I don't want to keep on going back and forth and back and forth over the black part too, because then you get too much blending of your color, and you kind of lose that sort of ombre look where it fades into the other color and then you just end up with a new distinct color where you're instead of just blending a little bit right there you've got a whole new color from where they mixed if that makes any sense I'm not sure it does so anyhow <laughs> all right so then I decided to use the pink sherbet after this and just go straight up the same way with the pink sherbet I know you all are probably getting tired of seeing me do paintings like this that start at one end and work their way <laughs> towards the other because there's not a whole lot of wispiness. And I know that's what a lot of you all are watching my channel for. So you can, you know, see the wispy painting. You see that I got more brass out that time than I intended. Um, but I do get it wispy at the top because I still, you know, I try to leave that negative space most of the time, and I did on this one. 
But um, this is just sort of what the inks are leading me to do right now. And there, there will be others that are just the wispy ones that have a line running down the center, uh, something like that. I'll, I'll try and, uh, I'll try and talk the inks into doing that for me soon. <laughs> All right. So, uh, with the pink sherbet, you'll notice I did I put down a lot more than one drop. I put down about three or four drops most of the time in each place. It, it's a very light color. And I wanted to make sure that that it showed up good enough. But I also didn't want to have too big of a transition between shades, between the current and the pink sherbet. So, you know, I put down a little more of it just to keep it a little bit darker. Now, one thing I could have done if I hadn't wanted to leave the amount of negative space that I did is I could have come above that row of pink sherbet with another row of it where I just put down one drop and worked one drop each time. And that would have faded it out even more. And that's something that you all can try if you want to stick with one shade. You can do an entire painting like this with one color. Just start out leaving it dark with your bottom layer. You know, use more ink at the bottom and every layer that you come up just use less ink until you're you know having just one drop of ink at a time down at the top uh, just a something that you might want to play around with at some point I'm doing that <coughs> you'll notice I got <clears throat> a little finger sticking up there I didn't really care because I knew I was going to be coming back and working that anyway Oh, sorry. Here comes the other arm. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I was going to be coming back and working that in, so you you weren't going to be able to see that. That was going to be gone, so I didn't try to fix that instantly. And that happens sometimes during painting like this. It's a little easier to get the fingers because there's a... See one ran off there? Well, I just blew the ink back up towards it and you know covered it up but it's a little easier to get them because there's so much alcohol on the paper at one time that it's harder to control it you know the less alcohol you have the easier it is to control but also the the darker your ink is going to be and the harder time you're going to have kind of spreading it out if you're looking for that soft wispy look you have to have a certain amount of alcohol or you're not going to get it you, I, you just won't so you know just keep that in mind that a lot of times uh things that i've seen from pictures that people have sent me or pictures on facebook where people are asking for advice about what can they do because that did not turn out at all like they wanted it's because they're either using too much ink or too much or not enough alcohol a lot of the time or they're you know using a a hair dryer like this or something similar and they're coming in too high right over top of the ink which will just blow it everywhere so if you if you haven't watched my last video uh, I think it's number 50 um wow man 50 videos that kind of blows my mind oh, and it's not even been a year um if it hadn't been for moving in the middle of all this across the entire country uh i could have probably had more than that uh, see i went down a rabbit hole and i forgot what i was talking about oh the yeah the um using this hair dryer um like in that the the last video that I did that was about you know fixing common problems that people have that was a big deal uh, try I tried for that to be a lot of what I focused on is how to use a dryer like this how to use your air source and not blow your ink out into those fingers now the people who are making flowers that's kind of what they want They'll use an airbrush and they'll blow out their ink in a thin stream. They want it to go out in a thin stream and then blow it back in. But um, for the style of painting that I do, I don't want 
thin streams. I want mine to be, you know, much bigger and wider and not, especially not just running all over the place. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't watched that video yet, if you're new, uh, watch number 50, watch number 19 as well. If you're new, you're just starting out, I, I cover some of that same thing in that one on how to use the dryer as well as some other things that are um, some stuff that you're going to need to know if you're just getting started with alcohol inks. Now, I decided to, I'd started going back over this one uh, at the bottom with just brass. Just would put down a few drops of brass and then alcohol and blend it because I just, it looked strange because I had this one spot up there in the corner with tons of brass and the rest of the painting just didn't have as much. But then I decided I didn't like the way the black and the current were blending. So I went back with the current and put one drop of it in the black and worked my way back down and just uh, used that to kind of blend the current and black together a little bit more. And just, uh, it, it was a little too delineated. I wanted there to be a softer fade between the colors. So I thought that might be a, a good way to, uh, to work that in there. Well, that's where I did that right there. It kind of helped with the, uh, it knocked down the just super big chunk of nothing but metallic down there too. But you see right here, I did the same thing I was talking about earlier. I made sure I hit both colors, but I didn't keep it in the black. I wanted to blow it up out of the black pretty quickly because I didn't want the the current and the alcohol and stuff that I was putting down there to just eat away at the black and blow, you know, all of the darkness up into the other color and which would defeat the purpose of blending. So I would, you know, kind of wash it down into the black once, maybe twice if it wasn't picking up good and then blow it back up into the current. And this is something that it just, it takes practice. If you're having trouble blending like this, it really, practice, practice, practice. That's my best advice for you. I can't really tell you all how to do this. It's a feeling, and it's something that you pick up as you do it, because you have to be watching your ink, what it's doing, and you have, you just have to practice knowing when it's time to move it somewhere else. That's pretty much the best way I can describe it to you. You know, if you don't want to have those sharp delineations between your colors, practice blending. If you've got some paintings that you are not real happy with that are like that, as long as you haven't sealed them, go back and work on them some more. Go back with some alcohol and practice blending or um, take just um, some pinata brass and some alcohol and go over the entire painting with that and use that to blend your colors together because I, I do that quite a bit as well. You get a lot of gold color in it if you do that. So if you don't like the gold color, you know, a lot of the brass in it, that might not be the solution for you. But uh, I I like the shine, <laughs> so so I'm okay with that. And plus, it looks really good if you resin over top of it. So, that's, I just went all the way down. Uh, you know, followed the line all the way down again, putting another drop of current in there. Now, I was, I didn't do that where the um, sherbet and the current met because it was, uh, it, it blended very well. And the colors were so similar just, I mean, the sherbet, just on the, on this particular substrate, the graphics, opaque white craft plastic, that's a super big mouthful, um, it was very close to the same color family, I guess, as the current, just a much lighter shade of it. Uh, now, if you use these on Yupo, 
the current, all three of these are staining inks on Yupo. Now, you know some of them don't stain that bad. All three of these stain, and they all, they don't stain the same colors. So, if you don't have color swatches of your inks on Yupo, that's something that you definitely want to do, or on anything. Whatever substrate you paint on, it's always a good idea to make yourself color swatches out of your inks. That's something I haven't mentioned in quite a while. And I actually need to update mine because I have a few new colors. Right there was, there was a, for some unknown reason, that one little spot I had some little water beading happen. And I didn't notice in time to get it out. So um, it did leave a few little bright pink spots there. That was just me debating on if I wanted to do anything else before I decided to um, start wisping up the edges a little bit, getting a little softer. So I just put my alcohol down right at the edge. You know, a little bit of it was on the ink, a little bit of it was on the paper, my, just on the white. So, and then you just kind of, you want to get it into the ink a little bit, but then you want to blow it back out and then back into the ink. And then it just becomes a matter of kind of working it back and forth. But you always want to end up with blowing it back in before too much of your alcohol dries up on the outside, on the white part. Because if you don't, you're going to be left with just another dark spot without the soft edge on it. You'll just have a, another chunk of... Uh, ink color out there if that <laughs> I hope that makes sense <laughs> my technical painting terms don't you love them <laughs> a chunk of ink um, but <laughs> you probably know exactly what I mean if you've done this any at all and um, it'll look it'll look just like the rest of that I'm pointing to this can y'all see it <laughs> I'm pointing to it to show you it'll look you know just like the rest of it that I haven't worked yet where the edge is and you'll you'll get another one of those sort of delineated uh, places that is not soft looking so just always make sure you get that pushed back in before that alcohol and ink that you've blown out starts to dry up out there and and that's an this is another thing of just practice it this it's harder than it looks you know I, I'm, I certainly don't want to scare anybody off because I, I absolutely believe that you can learn this but it's when, I mean, when I first started, you know, you there weren't a whole lot of tutorials out there telling you how to do anything. And so it was just mostly watching people doing sped up paintings. They weren't telling you anything. They might tell you that they used alcohol and what colors and brand of ink they used. <coughs> and that was about it. They didn't give you any of their techniques. Now, there are some... There were just a few that were doing that at the time. Um, now there's a few more. Thank goodness there's some people who have started sharing their their techniques a little bit more. But um, so it was, you know, I, I looked at some of these paintings and thought, oh, that is gorgeous, you know, and how hard can it be? <laughs> Put some ink down and blow it with a hairdryer. That shouldn't be too tough. So... Yeah, no, I was way wrong. It, the, it's not it's it's not as easy as it looks. And any of you who've tried it already, you know it's not. But it's absolutely learnable. It just like anything else, it takes practice. You can't expect to sit down with a palette of watercolors, and you know turn out some incredible painting the first time you sit down and do it. You know you can't sit down with oil paints and expect to turn out something like. Bob Ross would do your first time touching oil paints you know and there's just it's you know it takes practice like everything it's just another technique of art and every technique takes practice and it takes not getting frustrated and if you need to just walk away there are times you're going to get frustrated because I do I still have to walk away from paintings and put them up and come back to them later, sometimes much later, like a month. You know, sometimes you just need to walk away for a few hours. And sometimes you'll walk away and come back and think, oh, wow, that actually looks pretty good. Maybe I should just leave it alone. So, you know, just uh, don't let your head get the best of you in this because, you know, it, it can be frustrating 
but you can learn it. You can. I, it always just makes me sad when I hear people or read comments from people who are saying, you know, I'm just, I'm ready to give this up. I've tried and tried. I can't get it. I can't make it look like yours. And it's almost always a simple fix. Um, the ones that I've, you know, have heard back from that have said, oh, wow, that was exactly what my problem was. It's almost always a simple fix, but it still requires practice. And even once you figure out what you're doing that's keeping you from having a painting that looks the way you want it to, you're still going to have times when you're not going to be happy with your paintings. I do. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's one of these people who has, you know, 80,000 subscribers on YouTube watching them paint. They still have paintings that they don't like. I would bet you, if I had it, I would bet you a million dollars, you know, that they still have paintings they don't like. It just happens. It's just art. You don't always love everything that you create, but, you know, you do the best you can. You practice, and you'll have more that you love. <laughs> and you hang on to your paper when you're using an air source on it, or it blows away. So, well, that is, I mean, that's pretty much it for this one. This was not difficult. It was a simple, you know, as simple as they get kind of painting. Um, this is definitely one that you all can do. It's an excellent style if you need to practice your blending a little bit. Excellent type of a painting to do to practice your blending. I would um, I would recommend this, or this style here anyway. Well, thank you all for joining me again for another one of these. I hope everyone's staying healthy and well um, as I'm making this video. Obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic is still going on so uh i know if somebody's watching it in 2021 or something like that it was a year ago but <laughs> as of right now we're right in the middle of it so there it is that's um, all i'm going to do to this i'll let it dry then i'll seal it and i already have plans for this one to uh, resin it on a wooden panel so i will be back with you all just as soon as I can, hopefully within the next couple of days, with another painting for you. Everybody stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you soon. Bye!